This is one of a number of videos on hereditary cancer. Hereditary cancer is the reason that some families have an unusually strong pattern of cancer that's passed down through the generations. If you haven't already, I recommend starting with the introduction to hereditary cancer, which will go over a lot of the words and ideas that we use in the other videos. This video is focused on hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. And like the other videos, we'll talk about how a genetic counselor can work together with you to look at your family history and genetic test results and find a plan that helps you prevent cancer or catch it at early stages. It's important to keep in mind that most cancer, including most breast and ovarian cancer, is sporadic, meaning these are isolated cases of cancer that don't increase the risk for other people in the family. Hereditary cancer is more rare, but in these families, some people will have a much higher chance of getting cancer and should take different steps for monitoring and prevention. Family history is our first tool for looking for hereditary cancer. In families with hereditary cancer, we'll see certain things like cancer happening at young ages, multiple people in a family who've had cancer, including some people who might have had more than one kind of cancer. We'll often see people developing the same kind of cancer or types of cancer that we know are linked to each other, like breast and ovarian cancer, and we will sometimes see rare cancers like fallopian tube cancer or breast cancer in men. While it's rare to see all of these things in one family, if we see some of these features, genetic testing is another useful tool. Genetic testing is a blood test or a saliva test that focuses on tumor suppressor genes. These are protective genes that help control how things grow, and some people have a mutation in one of these genes, meaning the gene does not work properly. For hereditary breast and ovarian cancer, the tumor suppressor genes that we look at the most often are BRCA1 and BRCA2. BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations increase the risk of developing certain kinds of cancer, mostly breast cancer and ovarian cancer in women. There are some other cancers associated with BRCA1 and 2 mutations, although the risk of these cancers is not as high, and that includes prostate cancer and breast cancer in men, and pancreatic cancer and melanoma, mostly associated with mutations in BRCA2. While BRCA1 and BRCA2 are the most common genes found in families with hereditary breast and ovarian cancer, mutations in other genes can also cause an increased risk of breast and ovarian cancer, and the list of genes associated with hereditary breast and ovarian cancer keeps growing and growing. When we look inside our bodies, we find that many of these genes work together like pieces in a puzzle, so it makes sense that having a mutation in any of those genes would give us a similar effect of having a higher risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. It's possible to test for these genes individually, and it's also possible to test for multiple genes at the same time in what we call a genetic testing panel. A genetic testing panel has some advantages. This type of testing is more complete. That means that we're more likely to find a mutation that's in a family, and we're more likely to be able to rule out a mutation when there's none in the family. On the other hand, doing a genetic testing panel can also give us much more complicated results. So it's recommended that you work with a genetics expert like a genetic counselor to go over the testing options and testing results when considering a genetic testing panel. I'm going to talk briefly here about the type, different types of genetic test results. There's another video that will go into this in more detail. The type of result that people think of the most often is a positive test result. This means that we found a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene, and the person who has that mutation has a higher chance of getting cancer than other people. When we find a mutation, it's important to offer testing to other people in the family. It's actually very common for us to get a negative genetic test result. This means that we did not find a mutation in any of the tumor suppressor genes that we looked at. A third type of result that we sometimes see is an unclear or inconclusive result. The term that you might see on an inconclusive test result is a variant of unknown significance. While that sounds complicated, it means exactly what it says. There's a variant, meaning a form of the gene, that has unknown significance, meaning we don't know if it's a mutation or it's not a mutation. I group 
negative test results and variants of unknown significance together because in both cases the genetic test result did not give us information that we can use and we will focus on the family history to help determine somebody's chances of getting cancer and what type of monitoring and prevention they should do. For the rest of the video I'm going to focus on BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations. Of course we know that there are many other genes linked to hereditary breast and ovarian cancer and the exact recommendations could vary from gene to gene, but this is still a good starting point for the discussion. The most common cancer we see in people with a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation is breast cancer in women. We have a variety of options to offer people and these include increased monitoring with breast exams, mammograms, and breast MRIs starting at a young age. Monitoring can help catch cancer at early stages and improve the outcomes from breast cancer. We also want to offer people ways of preventing breast cancer completely. This includes medications like tamoxifen, which lowers the breast cancer risk by about 50%. Another option for reducing breast cancer risk is surgery. Breast surgery to remove the breast tissue lowers the risk of breast cancer by over 90%. Many women will choose breast reconstruction if they have this surgery. I'll talk more about ovarian cancer and ovarian surgery in the next slide, but I'll briefly mention here that removing the ovaries before menopause lowers the chances of breast cancer by about 50%. While we're grateful to have many options for monitoring and preventing breast cancer, it's also not easy to consider all of these different options and find a plan that's right for you. And that's where your genetic counselor and doctor can help you by reviewing your individual situation and discussing what's important to you. Ovarian cancer is the other cancer that is significantly increased in people who have a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation. While it's not as common as breast cancer, it's very serious because we have very few tools for monitoring and treating ovarian cancer. We do have some tools for monitoring for ovarian cancer and these include ultrasounds of the ovaries and a blood test for something called CA125, which tends to be higher when people have ovarian cancer. There are limitations to this type of testing. There are false positives, meaning some people may have an abnormal ultrasound or blood test, but don't have ovarian cancer, and there are false negatives, meaning some people who have ovarian cancer um, do not have abnormal results on that type of testing. For those reasons, we want to focus on some options for preventing ovarian cancer. These include birth control pills, which lower the risk of ovarian cancer by 50%. And ultimately, for women who are done having children or no longer planning on having children and are at least age 35 to 40, we do recommend that they consider having their ovaries and fallopian tubes removed, which lowers the chances of an ovarian type of cancer by more than 90%. As I mentioned earlier, this surgery, when done before menopause, also lowers the chances of developing breast cancer by about 50%. Again, these are complicated options and none of them are easy to choose, but a genetic counselor and your doctors can help you look at the different possibilities, taking into account what's important to you, and make a plan for prevention and early detection. While I've mostly been talking about the risks for women, there are some risks for cancer that affect men also. Men who have a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation are recommended to have breast exams and a baseline mammogram, as well as do early prostate cancer screening starting around the age of 40. Depending on their family history and the specific mutation, there are times where we'll also discuss monitoring for pancreatic cancer and melanoma skin cancer. Genetic testing is important for men to help them do early detection and prevention of cancer. It's also important because some of these men will have daughters who could inherit the mutation and have a higher risk of developing breast and ovarian cancer. This leads to how the BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations or mutations in other tumor suppressor genes are inherited. You'll remember that we have two copies of each of these genes and the mutation is usually just on one copy. If a father has a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene, when he has children, he only passes on 
one copy of that gene because the other copy comes from the mother. Sometimes he'll pass on the mutation and sometimes he'll pass on the copy that does not have the mutation. That means that half of the immediate relatives will have this mutation and half of them don't. When we find a mutation in someone, we recommend genetic testing for their adult children. That's children over 18. And usually we don't recommend testing until people are closer to the age of 25. That's because there's no cancer risks known to happen to children or young adults related to having a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, and we want each person to be able to have a chance to get this information and make their own decision about testing. Genetic testing is also recommended for brothers and sisters and for either the mother's or father's side of the family, depending on where the mutation came from. Sometimes we get a clue from the family history of where the mutation came from. But when we don't have a clue about which side the mutation came from, we recommend testing for relatives on both sides until we can determine where the mutation started. I hope this information was helpful for you in learning more about hereditary breast and ovarian cancer and how we can use family history and genetic testing to help people figure out which options for monitoring and prevention will fit the best for their medical situation as well as their personal values at each stage in their life.